Hello. In this Java tutorial, we are going to learn about sequential searches, also known as linear searches. Before watching this video, you're going to want to have a basic understanding of how one-dimensional arrays in Java work. For more information on that topic, please click on the link in the upper right-hand corner of this screen. Some important facts to know. First, sequential searches can work on a list whether it is sorted or unsorted. A sequential search will stop running when it finds its target or it gets to the end of the list. A sequential search will potentially have to check every single item in the list. So let's look at some code for a sequential search. This code was adapted from the course description for AP Computer Science A. So we're taking an array of ints called list and then an int called target, which is the number we're looking for. We're going to go through the entire list using this for loop. If we find an index contains the target, we're going to return that index. If we get through the entire list and don't find the target, we're going to return negative 1, which indicates that it is not present in the list. In our example, we're going to assume that list variable contains an array of ints described here. We're also going to assume the value 3 was passed to the target parameter, and that's represented on our stack here. Let's trace through this search. As we notice, the number 3 is not present in this array, so it will return negative 1. First, we start off by initializing j as 0. Next, we're going to check is j less than the length of the list array. j is currently 0. The list length is 5 because there's 5 indexes. 0 is less than 5, so this is a true statement. Next, we're going to check is list index j equal to the target. Currently, j is 0, so list index j is 4 and our target equals 3. This is a false statement because 4 is not equal to 3, so we're going to skip this block of code here and go back down to the end of the for loop. At the end of the for loop, we're going to increment j by 1, so now j equals 1. Next, we're going to check, is j less than list.length? 1 is less than the list length, which is 5, so we're going to continue. Now we're going to check again, is list index j equal to the target? List index j is 2, because j is currently 1, and our target is still 3. This is a false statement, so we're going to skip this block of code again. We're going to get to the end. We're going to increment j by 1, so now j equals 2. Back up at the top of the for loop, we're checking is j less than list length. 2 is less than 5, so the for loop will continue. Next, we're going to check list index j, whereas j is 2. So that value is 6. Does that equal our target, which is still 3? This is a false statement, so again, we're going to skip this. Go back down to the end of the for loop. On our for loop, we're going to increment j by 1, so now j is 3. We're going to check, is j less than the list length? It is, because the list length is 5 and j is 3. So we're going to continue through the for loop again. Here, we're going to pull out index 3. Index 3 is 1, so we're checking if it equals 3. It does not, so we're going to skip this block of code. And we're going to go down to the end of the for loop and increment j by 1 to be 4. Now we're going to check, is j less than list length? 4 is still less than the list length, which is 5, so we're going to continue. We're going to check if list index j, j is 4, so the value in index 4 is 7. Does 7 equal 3? It does not, so we're going to skip this block of code. Now we go down to the end of the for loop, increment j by 1, j is equal to 5. Now we see 5 is not less than the list length, because 5 is not less than 5, so we terminate the for loop, and we return negative 1. If at any point the value 3 had been in here, this would have been a true statement, and we would have returned that index. So the method that called it would know what index the number 3 was in. 
If 3 was present multiple places, it would have returned the index of the first instance of 3, because the method always ends when we return something. So, the great thing about sequential searches is that they can work on a list whether it is ordered or unordered. Unfortunately, as in this case, we had to go through every single value to find out that the number 3 was not in the array. To see the next video in this curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower left hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower right hand corner of the screen.